Hi, I'm old Nick. It's 51 years since I first came to Japan, and in that time I've done various things. But I now live in the mountains of northern Nagano for 32 years now. And I write, I do television, I make fine whiskey, and I'm recreating a forest. Eh? You know, it's God or time or nature that recreates forests. Yes, I know, of course. Japan is covered with 67% with trees. However, only 2% of that is the original old native forest. And as Japan is so long from north to south, each one of these native forests is a bank of DNA. But in the last 30 years especially, I've seen so much of Japan's forest destroyed. I've seen so much uh, used as dumping ground for, pestis for waste. And 29 years ago, I decided to do something about it. So I started buying neglected forest. Now, maybe, you know, this is a, a, a concept that is, is maybe a bit difficult, but most of the forest in Japan has been changed by man. Probably about 40% is uh, plantations of conifers. If you look at the hillsides, you see dark, that seed is cryptomeria. There's very little biodiversity in that. The other was traditionally managed coppiced mixed woodland. And it was managed for fuel and for food, uh, for fodder, for animals. And, um, and it was working very well, especially when I first came here. I thought, what a fantastic country. But if you leave this forest alone, you neglect it, it, turn, it turns into something which is not very nice. Can we have some pictures? Yeah, I, yeah. Now, that was how our woodlands looked when we started off. Tangled and strangled with vines. Trees sick, no light reaching the ground. But that's what happens when you let in the light. 10% of light should reach the forest floor. And this is true for forests all over the world. 10%, and what happens? When we started out uh, working with the forest, we had seven species of edible plants. Now we have 137. You know, woodland like this, you can see. Why is it so skinny? It's because the trees have been cut and it's uh, coppiced from the stumps. After 30 years, you have to tend this. But we didn't only cut trees, we also planted. Because as we, dig, as we dug around in the woods, we found uh, the remains of trees that were no longer there. So we got trees closest and we replanted. These are ve the typical vegetables. We don't plant them. When they come up, we nurture them. We have 52 endangered species. We have two new species. Bears come, dormice come. Oh, I've got a little one here. Lots of butterflies. Lots and lots of flowers. As the light reaches the ground, Flowers come. There's so many flowers, wild flowers in Japan. If the flowers come, the insects come, the birds come, the seeds come. The cycle starts again. And it's not only what you can see. Underneath your feet, there's a, a, an amazing world. There, there, there are filaments of funguses, mushrooms. And they interact with trees. So I came originally from fisheries. And I was very concerned about the way the water was not really acting properly in the woodland I bought. So we dug ponds. 
and we made waterways. We had one species of dragonfly when we started off. Now we have 42. We have six species of frogs. We have newts. We have salamanders. We have all kinds of water insects. And it's a habitat. But the other thing you see, why did we do this? Because the water underneath the ground had stopped flowing and the, the trees were going like this. You look at a tree and say, oh, you know, it's wet down there. It's okay if it's flowing, but if it's not, the tree will sick, sicken. So as we moved, the unseen water made it you know, visible. Then we also, the trees got better. I love, this is the year of the snake. Don't you love snakes? Oh, we've got six kinds. I love snakes. Yeah? Getting light to go down to the forest floor means there's space between trees. This means that owls can fly, hawks can fly, and breezes can blow, gentle breezes. And in a hot summer day, the forest creates breezes. Because there's a difference between the cooling canopy, as each leaf evaporates water, it cools the air, and there's movement. If you go into a, a living forest on a hot day, take a little feather or something, and you can see it move. It's really important. Now, uh, you see that little black patch at the back there? That's the national forest. And the really... Beautiful forest is ours, because they haven't done anything in it for uh, 20 to 40 years. And the cedars have stopped growing, and they're panicking, so they're puffing out pollen. Yeah, yeah. You don't get allergies when you come to our place. That's a dormice, it's an endangered species. We have bears, I love bears. I do, you know, especially teddy bears. And Ted the bear. I thought this program was about a bear, actually. <laughs> but anyway, <clears throat> that's a, a, a marten. We have badgers. We have raccoon dogs, tanuki. Ah, because we didn't have big trees in the beginning, we made nest boxes for the owls. Owls eat the voles and the mice who chew the roots of our new saplings. We're very happy with owls. As our trees grow, see that little face down there? That's a natural home for an owl. Sorry. The owls are finding their rightful places, and the nest boxes are now summer homes for other visitors. That's a flying squirrel. He's very welcome there. And that's a pika bear. <laughs> we have about five bears. I'm not afraid of bears because, oh, and the other thing is, we're not just making nature, we're also taking from nature. We grow um, shiitake mushrooms, winter mushrooms, uh, we have over 400 species of wild mushrooms, some of which you shouldn't eat. Well, you can eat them once, but uh, <laughs> we have people coming in, so we take the trimmed trees, that we, that stuff we can't use otherwise, and we chip it, and we use that for pathways, and people will walk on those pathways. They won't walk in the orchids. We found old uh, uh, charcoal kilns. Yeah, this is the first time I've spoken in, in English for three years. <laughs> Honestly. And now we're starting... Uh, trimming out that national forest. I've nagged them for 30 years, and we made an agreement that we would trim it out, and we're doing it with horses, so we don't damage the, uh, the ground. This is hardwood timber. And this is what the furniture in our center, made from wood, trimmed out from our woodland. Eh? They call it zatsuboku. In, in Japan, you know, useless wood, but there's no useless wood. This is our center. It's entirely made of Japanese timber. The woodland is a special place. As I said, 
67% of Japan is woodland. Nagano is 80%. But in Japan, we only have 50,000 people involved in, in, in woods, in creating woods. I'm told that in Germany, it's a million. Now, my feeling is that because woods are so productive, not only in beauty, uh, biodiversity, food, yeah, timber, places of learning, and places of healing, and the more love and the more sweat you put into the woods, the more that you get back. And woodland is a, a places of healing. They're the, they're the home of the, the human heart, I believe, is in woodland. I believe that all music started in woodland. I, I believe that half of our DNA comes from woodland. There was a, another gentleman on there, a little guy. He left school when he was 15 to burn charcoal. And then he became a, a, a logger. He knows more about the woodland than any professor that I've ever met. We need these local experts to be able to work with young people to create a beautiful future in most of the land area of Japan. And it can be done. If a Welshman can do it, anybody could do it. We only have one planet, and we must share it. So let's do it. Let's do it right. Good night, and thank you. Shalom. Al salam alaikum. Good night. <laughs> ah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.